It has come to light that a transcript that allegedly described the conversations between the people on board the deadly Titan submarine and its mothership during the dive towards the Titanic wreck last June is wholly fraudulent. When the communications record was made public last summer, it raised red flags because it revealed a sequence of concerning occurrences that transformed a descent to the bottom of the Atlantic into a last-ditch battle for survival. The purpose of this diary was to record the five travelers' fruitless attempts to return to the surface. However, the leader of the federal investigation team in the United States has since stated that the transcript is wholly fake. Following an extensive investigation that lasted nearly a year, the team was unable to uncover any evidence suggesting the Titan's occupants were aware of the impending catastrophic implosion that would ultimately result in their deaths. The pressures at the two miles below the surface where the tragedy happened would have instantly caused the submersible's hull to disintegrate. I have no doubt that this transcript is fake. Chairman of the Marine Board of Investigation and retired U.S. Coast Guard Officer Captain Jason D. Neubauer said, It was made up. It's unclear who the fake document's initial source was. When the fake transcript surfaced in late June, it purported to show minute-by-minute -minute conversations full of technical terms and accurate descriptions, including acronyms specific to the Titan that gave it a genuine feel. It appeared that the Titan's crew was dealing with hull alarms and cracking sounds in a panic before communications suddenly cut off. The Real-Time Hull Health Monitoring System, or RTM, was the main subject of the transcript. Proprietary According to Oceangate, the device has an unprecedented safety function that assesses the integrity of the hull throughout every dive to alert users to potential problems. According to a section of the Titan transcript, it reported to the mothership that there were multiple hull alarms along with crackling sounds. As the fictitious communications came to a conclusion, a notice about the sensor said, RTM alert active all red. However, the phony transcript came to a stop when the mothership sent seven communications inquiring about its whereabouts. The last message that was supposedly sent was, Please respond if you can, according to Neubauer. Someone did it well enough to make it look plausible. With the record giving the impression that the explorers were in a panic, former Navy submarine and submersible pilot Dr. Alfred S. McLaren first thought the transcript made sense but he later surmised that it might have been fake to hurt Oceangate's reputation or upset the victim's families. He told the New York Times, It might have been done to embarrass Oceangate. It was definitely going to rile up the family. The federal team found various inconsistencies in the convincing appearance of the transcript that showed the back-and-forth conversations between the mothership and the sub. Most importantly, they were privy to genuine, still-secret communications logs between the Titan and its mothership. The National Transportation Safety Board reviewed the official documents and found no proof that the crew knew what was about to happen to them. In order to ease their fears about the suffering their loved ones endured in their last moments, Neubauer believes that the truth may provide some comfort to the relatives of the victims. It can be helpful, but it doesn't lessen the pain, he told the New York Times. Following a thorough inquiry that started last summer, the phony transcript disclosures are the first. A final report could take years despite promises of wrapping up the probe by the anniversary of the Titan's loss. Neubauer emphasized the difficulties in conducting the inquiry, such as the scarcity of eyewitnesses, the advancements in vessel technology, and the jurisdictional issues arising from the incident taking place in international seas. The U.S. Navy is assisting with the debris recovery process and working with other international partners on the investigation. While the original plan was to finish the report in a year, Neubauer predicted that it would really take two to three years, which is normal for this kind of in-depth research. He stressed that even though the process was drawn out, the results might result in new safety laws, which would provide the relatives of the victims some peace of mind in the knowledge that their tragedy would help avert such tragedies. The five men on board the submersible were British-Pakistani businessman Shahzada Dawood, 48, his 19-year-old son Suleiman, British Airways executive Hamish Harding, 58, French Titanic expert Paul-Henri Nargillette, 77, and Stockton Rush, 61, founder and CEO of Oceangate, the American company that built the submersible and conducted the tourist dives. On the day of the catastrophe, he was also operating the Titan. Prior to this, Rush, the Titan's pilot, had written off worries about the sub's experimental design and its inevitable failure. Even though it was referred to as an experimental boat, 
It has gone under the ocean 90 times and 13 times as deep as the Titanic. The Titan went missing on June 18, 2023, and five days later debris from the ship was discovered close to the Titanic's ruin in the North Atlantic, sadly proving that a catastrophic implosion had taken place. Amidst the hunt, speculations over the sub's remaining oxygen and reports of underwater noises gave rise to momentary hopes that people on board could still be alive. As a result, a squadron of foreign ships arrived to look for the missing submarine. Five days later, on June 22, the Coast Guard verified their worst suspicions when they found Titan debris and realized the sub had imploded.